The rear end is actually the elephant's bottom in the room. Whoa, that's weird. It will disconnect the drive to the rear wheels. I don't know if that's true. Maybe that's just marketing, but anyway. What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are driving one of the most hyped cars of the last few months. This is the Toyota GR Yaris and it is a little rally car. That is why it has been so hyped. It is, it's well, I don't know how long we haven't had these homologation cars, but this is it. This is an old school homologation car for the World Rally Championship WRC and Toyota backs up the hype as well because the hardware on this car is pretty sick. So today I'm going to show you around it, show you all the cool stuff on it and then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. But before we begin don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to receive updates when we upload a new video and if you would like a chance on winning one of these Toyota GR Yaris listen carefully because this video has been sponsored by BOTB so big thanks to BOTB.com who have been changing lives for the past 20 years with their dream car competitions you just won a brand new Audi <laughs> RSQ8 170 oh grand <laughs> And this week they're giving you the chance to win one of four supercars, including the Aston Martin Superleggera, Maserati MC20, McLaren Artura or Rolls-Royce Wraith. Or you could win one of 150 cars like the Toyota GR Yaris with £100,000 of cash in the boot. This is a one week only promotion, so make sure you get your tickets, which are available from only two euros before midnight Sunday. You can enter from all over the world and you only have to be 17 or over to play. Links and information are in the description below. Enjoy the video. So let's begin with our review. I have to say that I have seen a lot of photos of this car in reviews and stuff and they were always white and i'm super happy that we've got a red one this is emotional red this color and i really like it i think it looks really cool on this car especially with the wheels you get with the optional circuit pack so the forged 18 inch wheels and all the black stuff around the car so let's begin at the front because we have this massively aggressive front bumper with these air intakes the square or rectangle air intakes the the angles on the grill the gaping mouth the intakes here it all looks super cool i think it, this is probably the coolest looking hot hatch of i don't know the last five years whatever the last 10 years i think it looks so cool it's so beefy so angry aggressive it just fits this car really well now the special thing about this car and why it has been so hyped is that it's an obligation special um, but they did make it like super different from a regular Yaris and uh, in the WRC regulations in recent years you have to build 25,000 of them to be able to use it in the WRC in the past uh, they would get away with like a couple hundred or even less and but that's super easy to find a couple hundred people who want like this super limited special homologation special car but this you have to sell 25 you have to build 25,000 of them so to make it completely different from a regular Yaris is is quite risky and quite a bold move now we'll get to the biggest change uh, in a minute but the only things that this car shares with a regular Yaris are the head and rear light units the mirror caps and the roof fin so this thing right here everything else all the panels are bespoke for this GR Yaris and that makes it super cool uh, the bonnet is aluminium the doors are aluminium the tailgate is aluminium that saves 24 kilos the roof is made from carbon fiber which saves three and a half kilos i mean that is some serious stuff as i mentioned before uh, we have the circuit pack on this car which means that you get a retuned suspension setup 18 inch forged bbs wheels which 
I mean, these are really, really cool. And you get Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, as you can see. So these are 225 section tires, which is quite wide, I would say, for a car this small. But they grip really well. We've got GR brakes as well, uh, a GR logo. There are a lot of GR logos on this car, actually. I already spotted a few. Let's Maybe we should add a counter in the video, because I think there are a lot of GR badges on this car. Um, okay, so we'll start right there one on the brake calipers two and three on the sides four and five <laughs> i think this is going to be a lot at the rear brake calipers six seven eight is that a badge maybe nine okay so nine gr badges on the exterior we'll get to the interior later um, so rear tires 225 40 and 18 as well um, and of course this is a massive part as well so the regular Yaris which is basically your grandma's shopping car has quite a high roof because people need to sit in the back as well uh, and they need headroom but that's not ideal for a rally car of course so what did they do the roof is lower, about four and a half centimeters in general, but here at the rear, it's almost 10 centimeters lower than a regular Yaris. So the three-door Yaris isn't sold. The, it's just the GR Yaris that is sold as a three-door car, uh, which is just super cool. I mean, if you have four-time world rally champion, Tommy Makinen as your head of uh, operations, you're going to get some crazy stuff. So he apparently wanted the roof to be even lower, uh, but Toyota didn't want to sacrifice the rear seats. Um, so this of course means that the lower this roof is, the more air uh, can go to the rear spoiler, which is much bigger on a WRC car, of course. Now at the rear, we've got, I mean, yeah, the elephant in the room, the elephant's bottom in the room, uh, it, it has a big butt. It's got this massive wide body. It is so much wider than a regular Yaris. And it just looks so, so muscly and beefy. And well, the only car I can think of is the Renault Clio V6. That's also this shopping car that has been transformed into this wide body, super muscly rear cool, Hot hatch. I think this is like a smaller, is this smaller? I think it's about the same size. It's like a modern version of the Clio V6, although it has half the cylinders, but we'll get to that later on. Uh, we've got two exhaust pipes, uh, tail pipes in the rear bumper as well, um, but there's hardly any sound coming from those, unfortunately. Where is it? Ah, oh, there it is. So. Three cylinders, as I said. It's a 1.6 liter three cylinder engine with a massive turbo, 261 horsepower and around 307 newton meters of torque. So that's actually quite powerful. It is the world's most powerful uh, three cylinder engine, in fact. It's also hydraulically mounted on one side and the turbo runs on ball bearings, so spins on ball bearings. So again, the hardware is pretty freaking serious. Also, we've got two more GR badges here. I think that's 10 and 11. But this engine is a serious piece of kit. I mean, 261 horsepower from a three cylinder engine. Who would have thought that would, would be possible a few years ago? I mean, that's pretty, pretty crazy. Now. Um, the wheelbase is the same as on a regular Yaris, but it's actually not the chassis of a Yaris. So it's got the front end of a Yaris, but the rear end is actually from a Toyota Corolla and CHR. Um, I think that might have to do something with the width. So maybe this is wider at the rear than a regular Yaris, or it could be the suspension mounting or something like that. I don't know why they decided to do that. On the inside, well, let's start with our counter again. We've got one logo on the dial, 
12, that's 13 on the starter button, 14 on the steering wheel, 15 on the little WRC developed for the WRC Championship plaque here. We've got another one on each headrest here in the front and we've got one, two more on the floor mats. I mean, it is pretty significant the amount of GR badges on this car. <laughs> anyway, um, we've got a six speed manual in here of course, we've got a lovely steering wheel. Now, the seating position when, when you get in it for the first time, you would say that it's a bit too high. Um, I think this is just a regular Yaris mounting, so I don't think they could have gone any lower. But I did read somewhere that a WRC or that a rally uh, driving position is a bit higher than a hot hatch driving position because you need the uh, the view. I don't know if that's true. Maybe that's just marketing, but uh, whatever. Could be true. Sounds like it could be true. So let's start it up. Um, what else do we have? Well, we've got a four-wheel drive system, of course, which is pretty unique. Uh, I just saw another GR badge on the screen, which is pretty unique for a car in this segment, of course. And that's why this car is a compromise, but it feels like more of a compromise between a hot hatch and a WRC car, and, and less as a, as a compromise between your grandma's shopping car and a WRC car. You get what I mean? It's the starting is the starting position for them uh, is so much better to develop a rally car, and that's why they built this car. So we've got that four-wheel drive system, which in normal mode we have a driving mode button right here. If you have normal mode, it sends 60% to the front, 40% to the rear. If you switch to sport by turning it to the left, it goes to 30% to the front, 70% to the rear, and if you go to track mode it sends 50 to the front, 50 to the rear, and uh, but is able to go 100% to the rear, 100% to the front, in theory. So that's pretty significant. And if you have that circuit pack I talked about earlier, where you get the wheels and the suspension, you also get two Torsen limited slip diffs, one at the front, one at the rear, and we've got a center uh, clutch, basically, as well, to divide between uh, front and rear. So the hardware is pretty freaking sick in this car. Another cool feature is that if you pull the handbrake while driving It will disconnect the drive to the rear wheels. I mean, how rally is that? So Let's take it for a little drive towards the Autobahn we're in track mode right now, so that means we've got 50-50. And, I mean, the engine, the drivetrain, it all feels really, really like zippy and aggressive and, and, and quick to respond. The three-cylinder with that massive turbo, because it is a big turbo, there is a bit of turbo lag, but when it goes, it really goes. And I wasn't really expecting that to feel like this. It, it's, it's, it's quite a serious drivetrain. It doesn't really feel like a three-cylinder engine. Sometimes you hear it uh, because, of course, you have that little bit of a, well, not a rattle, but the irregularity of a, a, an engine with an uneven number of cylinders. But I really like that. I really like this engine. I think it's it's much better than uh, when it would have been a four-cylinder. I think this has much more character. Ooh, it feels really fast. So as I said, there's not much sound coming from that exhaust, so I'll open the windows, but. There's a little bit of a, a fake sound coming through the speakers. That's what you hear mostly, and the engine. But the exhaust is pretty much silent. So the hype around this car is completely justified. It is, it is absolutely mental. 
how good and, and cool this car feels. Um, it has, for instance, 259 uh, more welding points than a regular Yaris. And that means that it's super rigid, it's super stiff. And that means that you have a better starting position to set up your suspension. So on the Autobahn, full throttle. Top speed is limited at 230 kilometers an hour. But actually it still goes quite well at this higher speed. I mean you can feel that it's not really made for this but I don't think Toyota made that many cars with a limiter because that feels really weird and, and like old school or something like that. Anyway, Toyota, they were thinking about how to integrate uh, a double clutch transmission into this car, uh, but there's no transmission available that would fit this package because you know, it's super small, it's super light, it weighs 1,280 kilos. And uh, the, the weight and the size just, it doesn't match this car yet. But they are thinking about how to integrate it into this car. It's also the lightest four-wheel drive system fitted on any production car. And, well, that's just that, that rally pedigree coming through or, or it's not really pedigree it's just the fact that it's an homologation car that makes it so freaking cool and the fact that you can daily drive it pretty easily I mean yes it's quite a small and, and stiff little car so yeah it, it, it tussles around and it, and it shakes a bit but because the, the car is so rigid and stiff you don't have any cracks or creaks or rattles the car feels pretty solid actually for such a small car and the funny thing is that we have this little plaque here developed for the FIA World Rally Championship but they never competed in the WRC with this car because the 2020 2021 season was cancelled because of the COVID pandemic and the 2022 regulations are completely different where they have to uh, use a hybrid drivetrain so this car will never be used in the WRC they're going back to the 2017 car and develop that with a hybrid drivetrain so it's the homologation car that never was it's it's like a really weird thing that I absolutely love I love the fact that they did this in the first place I love the fact that if you drive this car when you drive this car you feel that it's such a serious piece of kit it, it's probably the best hot hatch I've ever driven if you look at that car oh, that's that strange limiter again I thought there was something wrong with the car um, but it's probably the best hot hatch I've ever driven if you, or that has ever been made if you look at just the weight the power the size the, the hardware that ha has been thrown at this car yeah it's super impressive and that four-wheel drive system also means that 
every single one of those 261 horses can be used and put on the ground because Martijn has been able to achieve a 5.160 to 100 run earlier uh, and Toyota says it should do five and a half seconds so that is seriously quick and he said that he thought that maybe a pro driver would be able to get it under five seconds zero to 100 so that would be super impressive 100 to 200 that's not really where this car shines of course it did a 14.86 run which is not uh, not bad or anything but it's not super impressive either because it's quite a light car with 261 horsepower but I think the three-cylinder struggles a bit at higher speeds so all in all I think you know in here you don't really feel or see the the specialness about this car it's when you drive it when you throw it around it just feels so uh, nimble and agile and powerful and, and, and purposeful I don't know it just feels like some really capable people looked at this car and thought okay how can we make this car the best it could be and I really like that because those are not often the criteria anymore making things the best they could be now it's it's more about making them more efficient or faster just faster or I don't know this has been looked at with a rally driver's eye and I really really love that so that's it for this review guys I hope you enjoyed it you can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle you can also check out this video or go check out this playlist see you at the next one bye